1873, Oliver Winchester and the Winchester Repeating Arms Company gave the world the Model 73 carbine. At the time, the weapon was considered revolutionary. Now, instead of having to reload after every shot, the user could simply continue to squeeze the trigger. Because of the repeater's capabilities, it quickly became the weapon of choice for many people who were attempting to settle the West, manifest destiny and such. In a world of bolt-action rifles, revolvers, and bows and arrows, this was like having a machine gun. For this reason, it is referred to as the gun that won the West. For 50 years, this weapon would be mass-produced and distributed throughout the world, ultimately leading to over 720,000 units being sold. Consequently, tens of thousands of people, mostly Native Americans, would be slain by this weapon, and the Winchester's family net worth would skyrocket, thus turning them into some of the wealthiest people in the country. In 1880, Oliver Winchester would eventually pass away, leaving the massive fortune and half of the Winchester Repeating Arms Company to his son, William Winchester. Sadly, William would pass away only a few months later from tuberculosis, ultimately leaving everything to his wife, Sarah. That's a hard Sarah. word. <laughs> <With> tuberculosis? <laughs> Tuberclio- tuber- tuber- tuberculosis? <laughs> like, come on, dude. <laughs> Shut up. It is hard, dude. <laughs> Uh, almost overnight, Sarah would become one of the wealthiest women in America. However, it nice. wouldn't be only millions of dollars and half of a weapons manufacturing empire that she'd be receiving. No. In addition to all of that, she would also be inheriting thousands of angry ghosts. <clears throat> Spooky. In case anyone isn't familiar with the concept of manifest destiny, it was basically the God, the, the heavenly, divinely, whatever you want to call it, ordained right of the United States to go ahead and expand westward. And also, I think I think it's interchangeable with westward expansion. But basically, they're like, you know what? We're going to go and take all that land because it's ours by God. What are you talking about? They gave it to us. Yeah, it's true. That's it was, why, uh, it was a mind. gift to us yeah. from the Native Americans. Yeah, I don't know. Did you not read your history book in kindergarten? Oh, no, yeah. Well, <laughs> even though that's what the history book says, that's not. History is written by the winners. It's awfully un American of you. Yeah, that's okay. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the You Go First podcast. My name is Austin, and this is my best buddy in the world over don't here. Say, is my don't lie to them. Don't lie. Fernando. To them. <laughs> Fernando, how you doing today? I'm good. Going through some renovations at the house. That's why we have. Uh, Kind of a background thing. I got a desk coming in. Oh, I thought that was your house. I thought you were actually your house. Oh well, yeah, I am in the studio right wow. now. Yeah, That's amazing. This you is, don't have, you have any uh, any breaking news to give us? Breaking news though. Uh, we hit 210 subscribers on our YouTube channel. Yay! Yeah, that's something. Our impressions are magically back up the second Austin puts out one of his videos. <laughs> Weird. What can I say? The camera loves me. <laughs> or a certain demographic was. I don't know. It's okay. Uh, so um, uh, you probably know a decent amount, but what do you know off the top of your head, you know, before <clears throat> without spoiling anything about the Winchester house? Kooky, maze-driven house with no real rhyme or reason to any of its building structure and okay. supposedly haunted by the spirits of all those who died by the Winchester rifle. Yeah, when I say thousands of angry And related ghosts, to the Winchesters from Supernatural. <laughs> yes. I actually you know, didn't funny. know that. I'm just guessing. I just know his name's Dean Winchester. It's not, but I'll be honest. When I watched the series, I actually thought that they had something to do with each other. I mean, it's I probably an Easter it egg. It's probably like the inspiration. No, yeah, probably. It's a great name, though. Yeah, Winchester. My favorite I would be living here if my was in Modern Winchester. Warfare 2. Or wait, no, that's the Model 1887s. I think that's a sure. Winchester. Yeah, it might be. I could be wrong. I don't know guns. Yeah, I love to dual wield them in Call of Duty. Okay, so yeah, that that kind of covers it a little bit about what it is. You know, just an endlessly built house. Whether you know was she crazy or was she onto something, we'll never know. I guess, or maybe we will by the end of the podcast. We will. Know? I mean, that's that's really for the audience to decide with their own theories. You know, believe what you want to believe. I have my own beliefs, and it's not very supernatural. Wow. Okay. Wow. I actually agree on something here. Well, no, it's just God damn it, Austin. 
<laughs> One of us has to always be the skeptic. No, we don't, there's no rule. We can there's agree. A, there are rules to this. <laughs> we can't always agree. That'd be the most boring podcast in the world. We never agree. This would be the first time we agreed. Anyways, let's let's get right into it. All right, you're starting, so go for it. For the most part, Sarah Winchester's early years were relatively extravagant and comfortable for the times. Even before she married into the Winchester family, Sarah Par- Party, her maiden name, was the daughter of a wealthy and skilled woodcarver who owned and operated his own mill near New Haven, Connecticut. It's where Yale sure he made wooden shoes. Ooh. I'm Clogs? Kidding. Yes. He was Dutch. <laughs> As a direct <laughs> result of this wealth, she and her fine siblings were able to receive a quality education and even dabble in some extracurriculars, extracurriculars like learning French and music. I mean... That's the best you can do for extracurriculars, French and music. I mean, back then, I guess. I mean, what what are the? I mean, it's, I mean what? Else? I mean, like, woman, I don't know. What are you like, going to do back then? You know, what are you what are you trying to say about women during this time? I'm saying women weren't treated equally back then. Oh, okay. So you're a misogynist. <laughs> yes. All right, cut that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm keeping that in. <laughs> Despite her rather privileged upbringing, her adult life would not be as simple. Despite the fact that she would eventually become a millionaire, which in today's times, that's probably being like a trillionaire. Yep. Uh, for starters, her first daughter, Annie, would succumb to Mars Marasmus at the age of three months in 1866. As a direct result of this tragedy, Sarah would become a recluse for the better part of a year. During this time, however, Sarah would also become very passionate about architecture and design. Foreshadowing. I'm not really sure what Marasmus is. What is Marasmus, Austin? Uh, from what I gathered, you literally just kind of like fade away, become emaciated, and you just die. Is it, is it more effective? Like, is it more, are toddlers more at risk? I think children are more at risk. Yeah. But I am literally pulling that out of You're nowhere. a doctor, though, you always brag about. No, I never said I was a doctor. You, you basically I, say I have to call you doctor all I the time. I could go to school for another year and become a doctor. Not so a should you know what, <laughs> should you know what Marasmus is? <laughs> I'm not a medical doctor. But you brag about being a... Do- Never mind. <laughs> 14 years after this devastating event, Sarah would also lose three of the closest people to her in the span of two years. Really unlucky. Yeah. This included her mother, Sarah. Sarah's mother's name was Sarah? No, this included her mother. Yes, her mother... Her mother... Her Yes. So she's Sarah Jr.? Sarah Jr., but I don't think they do that for females. <laughs> her father-in-law, Oliver, and then her... Finally, her husband, William... These events would solidify her desire to be a bit of an introverted recluse and ultimately lead to everything that ha- was to come. I think introverted recluse might be a little bit like a double synonym, but that's it okay. Sounds good. It sounds good, though. It does sound good. It's good. That's, it's it's good writing. This is it's why all about you flow, man. It's all about flow, dude. That's, that's a nice thing, which it took me a bit to get out of when I was, you know, up until this point, as I'm sure the same with you because you did history. It's all APA format that we had to do. Do not even remember. Right. I I don't even remember APA, MLA. I don't remember the formats. So I just remember ML, I hated it. Yeah, ML. Me and you wouldn't write an MLA because MLA is modern language, modern language arts, and the rules are slightly different. So, for example, in APA, you don't you're not going to say things like, "Oh, he was as you know fast as a or as powerful as a tiger." You know, you don't you don't say that stuff with APA. MLA, you can be creative and you can. The American yeah. Psychological Association, this form of writing research papers is used mainly in social sciences like psychology, anthropology, sociology, as well as education and other fields. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. So we don't get to be creative and, you know, the things we wrote in, unfortunately, me and you. But yeah. this is my chance and I like writing like this. It's fun. Yeah, no, this is so how you, you use uh, double negatives. And this stuff is how like you that. took people's jobs when you were writing for Drive Magazine or whatever. <laughs> it's called Hot Cars. I never Hot took Cars, dude. Dude, you took that one guy's job. Poor <laughs> bastard. You just messaged me and he asked me if I lost He's my like, job. Hey, they too, laid me off and they replaced me with you. Maybe, maybe, maybe that was a. And for anyone that doesn't know, Hot Cars is a, is a magazine where it's like scantily clad men in their cars, and it's just like, <laughs> yes, Austin actually, was really good at this job. I was responsible for the the final the calendar. You know, I oh, had, every year. Yes, that was my forte. It's pretty. It was pretty risque if you want to go check it out. <laughs> Hit me up at hot cars. Hot cars. Hot cars. <laughs> dot com. Hot cars. XXX. Dot com. <laughs> Make sure you're 18 or older first. How are hot cars doing these days? Hot cars. Dot com. What to know about GM's 50 millionth car, the golden 1955 Chevy Bel Air? A lot of it's 
clickbait articles, to be honest with you. I mean, that's what you wrote. <laughs> I got some good stuff. I got some good money from it. I wonder if they keep your your stuff in here. Oh, they did. I, I checked by... back periodically. They actually reposted one of mine uh, about a month ago. Oh, but now I think I can click on you. Oh, God. <laughs> you're so cute. It still has your profile picture. <laughs> oh, man. Wait, did you just... You wrote for them as like as like one month ago? No, they reposted it. Here's why three-wheeled ATCs are banned in the U.S. Oh, I sent you a TikTok or like an Instagram thing. There's like some nice car. And I said, I bet you can't guess what this is. And I bet you can't. But anyways, it was seen uh, driving around Boston. But I doubt you know what it is. So you don't have right to look now, it right now. No, you, Instagram? Don't. you don't know what it is. <laughs> Here's everything you need to know about. Uh, Aventador. See, you don't even know how to, like, you don't even know what that word is, Aventador. Do you? I'm not Italian. Why would I know that? <laughs> <laughs> all Wait, right. I thought, I thought you were Italian. <laughs> no, I'm not Italian. I'm very, like, like all the Western European countries. Mm. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're the colonizers. When William passed away and left his inheritance to Sarah, she instantly gained access to over $20 million in today's money. So I guess she wasn't a billionaire, but it's, it's still a lot of money. And hell, and, okay, especially when you think about like how little, like how few things there was to actually spend your money on back then. It's a lot of money. So, I mean, you I, think back then, like a soda pop cost a nickel or something. Not even, <laughs> like, I mean. No, even back then, like what is this, the 18, no, early 1900s? Uh, late 1800s into 1900s. Yeah, dude, everything was. It's cheap. You buy, it was buy a house cheap. for like $8, dude. <laughs> Anyways, when William passed away and left his inheritance to Sarah, she instantly gained access to over $20 million in today's money and held immense influence over one of America's premier weapon makers. Despite this, Sarah knew that no amount of money was going to bring back her loved ones. Because of this, she became desperate to find meaning in her family's suffering. Ultimately, this led to led to her... Oh Jesus. This Ultimately, led her to... You, just, her you gotta to switch her to... A medium who yeah. had some rather interesting things to say. Thank you. I appreciate it. I was having a bit of a stroke right there. Yeah, I don't know who fucking wrote this script. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> During this consultation, the spiritualist in question claimed that thousands of angry spirits had cursed the Winchester name and were now pursuing Sarah. I mean, the family's money was practically dripping in blood. <laughs> dripping in Literally. blood. Literally. <laughs> Hold on, uh, really quick. You don't have a mention of Houdini in this article, do you? No, it's it's no, you're good. But like I found out like so Harry Houdini like spent a good part of his life trying to like out oust uh mediums and spiritualists uh <clears throat> that like took advantage of like grieving people and trying to contact their loved ones in the afterlife. And I think he did the Winchester house. But basically tried to basically prove that like spirits aren't real and this like you can't contact spirits. And he even actually had a he had like a secret code with his wife, I think, saying, hey, if I die and you need to contact me, it's like I think it was like Rosa. Oh, man, what was it? Rosalie, it was, Rosalie, yeah, right. Rosalie something. It was two words. And maybe Austin can put it in post. But basically, he's like, if you ever hear that, you'll know that it's me. And I think she did like for 10 years, she did seances after his death. And like, she never like, there was no proof. Like, mm. and you know, shout out Harry Houdini, man. I mean, he's my kind of guy. Very, trying very to get, noble. Trying to oust all these fakers. I know. What's Good the modern you. day version of that? Like a spiritualist? Of what, a spiritualist? Psychic. Yeah, what would you say? <laughs> I mean, I, I guess. Yeah. I mean, I feel that most people, only people who tend to believe psychics are people who are really into that stuff, which is nothing wrong with that. Yeah. But you know, I'm trying to think of more of a modern person who's really trying to capitalize off of people's. Never mind. Zach Bagans. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Ghost Adventures. Zach Bagans. <laughs> Sci Fi Channel. <laughs> Ghost Hunters International. <laughs> all of them. Although you're lumped with all those people, aren't you? Because you're a believer. I'm a believer, but I mean, when when the camera angle is Zach Bagans looking down a hallway, but you can't see down the hallway, and he goes, "It's, it's right there," and then it's, it's like just you hear the German point music. <laughs> And then it like it turns to the hallway, and then nothing's there. He's like, he was just right there. <laughs> I swear to God, dumb like, cameraman. Something, something sinister was just looking at me in this hallway, and then all of a sudden, I felt rage. <laughs> Come out, ghost! I want to fight you. I'll I kick your ass. You. I'll kick. <laughs> I'm kicking your ass. 
During this consultation, the spiritualist in question claimed that thousands of angry spirits had cursed the Winchester name and were now pursuing Sarah. She claimed that many of the victims who died at the hands of the Winchester weapon had blamed the owners of the Enterprise for their deaths and were in the midst of exacting their revenge. Apparently, the only solution would be for Sarah to move out west and continuously build a home to escape the anguished specters. Wow. I mean, that's logically just makes sense, right? That's I mean, obviously, you know, something tells me this. Maybe it was like, like, hey, you're going to build a house for all the dead spirits. <laughs> so, like, just keep making rooms like a almost like a death hotel. I think there's a K-drama about that. I mean, maybe, but it's oddly specific. I you know what I mean? Like, this. this woman, like, maybe this woman just was really desperate to prove that she was real. And she's like, I have to do something big. And this is like a big name coming to me. So I've got to make it. I've got to make this whole situation bigger than it needs to be. Well, now she's forever in. She's forever famous, Steve. She is. Yes. She solidified her name in you know, history, dude. That's she how you stands live, out. That's from, how you live forever, dude. She stands out from the actual Winchesters. In a completely different way. She made a name for herself. Hey, man. Respect so any- the grind. So anyways, this conversation ultimately drove her to purchase a small two-story farmhouse in San Jose, California in 1886. Thanks to Sarah. Right, how team. small is small? What's the square footage on this bad boy? Uh, I mean, it was just a it was just a normal-sized house. I mean, granted. A nowadays, starter home, if you will. A starter home. There you go. But thanks to Sarah's keen eye for architecture and design, Call back to when she got interested in architecture and design when she was grieving the loss of her child. The quaint country home would quickly evolve into a gigantic seven-story mega mansion that would be affectionately named Yanada Villa or House on Flatland. Hey, good job saying Yanada. Did I do that right? Yeah, I was really afraid you're going to go Lanada. <laughs> I looked it up before I said it. Good job, dude. I'm proud of you. For the next 36 years, construction on the estate would be carried out 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Oddly enough, this statistic would be the most normal thing about Sarah's home. See, I feel like I watched something that contradicted that 365 days a year thing where like people would take it off. I'm sure that like uh, there's no way they did it every single so... of every day. There's holidays, there's things like that, but you know. Anyways, there's some historical discrepancies on the accuracy of the 365 days thing. So we'll get into that later. <clears throat> At first glance, you probably thought that Sarah was simply building up the property for the sake of building up the property. You know, just rich people things. You know, let's increase the value of this bad boy what and else then flip it. However, that could not be further from the truth. Instead, she was constructing what could quite possibly be the world's biggest indoor maze for ghosts. Oh, maybe that was it, you know? Maybe she's trying to build a house, like... Wasn't that the, the the rumor that, like, you build a house so big that it confuses ghosts so they can't find you? Well, that was the point, supposedly, that you make yeah. this gigantic home, always weird, which we'll get to, but you make the house in a weird way where it makes it confusing and disorienting to ghosts. Like, they can't supposedly just walk through walls, but... I mean, that that, that we pick and choose what ghosts ghosts can do to make things convenient. Just saying. As it turned out, the Winchester Mystery House, as it became known, would be built to confuse the spirits who were chasing Sarah. To do this, she designed the house to have things like trap doors, secret passageways, fake exits, hallways that led to nowhere and weird skylights throughout the building. There's even a door on one of the upper levels that leads to the sheer drop off of outside the mansion. I remember that from watching... uh, I think Ghost Adventures and BuzzFeed. Was, I remember Ghost Buzz Adventures. Yeah. And rumor has it that it was only Sarah that knew the correct route throughout the house. I mean, I would hope so, right? If you live there, you should know your bearings. Like, you should know where what goes where. Well, supposedly, like, we'll, we'll touch more on it later, but I know I didn't write this part in, but she actually, like, had workers supposedly work staggered shifts. So they didn't know who was working on what day. They didn't know what projects were being carried out. And some people believe she did that on purpose to so that way nobody would know the correct route. But you know that, or you know, she just kept hiring different people. That or like, people, you know, hey, sorry, we can't do that today because we're working at the other McMansion down the road. So we will help you this day. <laughs> the McMansion, <laughs> who, McMansion. who was a grimace, dude? <laughs> <laughs> the grimace shake. Oh, <laughs> There that's getting cut you. out when you, that's, doing, that's getting cut out when you turn on the noise cancellation thing i won't turn on noise cancellation what also added to the mystery of the winchester house and uh sarah was the fact that she remained reclusive and antisocial. reportedly she would only talk to a few people who were involved with the projects and would typically stick to herself 
And because of this, people who lived in the area began to refer to Sarah as the mysterious figure within the community. The presence of a seance room also probably encouraged this label. Where's Harry Houdini when you need him, dude? I know. Well, I'm sure he's to point, like you said, how he tried to prove his place wrong. He actually did stay here. And yeah. He never found anything. Because to be fair, though, croc. I mean, I don't believe in this, but to be fair, as you've seen with any any show, when a skeptic, I think if you go into any place, I think you whether, mean books. Whether you're a skeptic or a believer, if you go into a place, you're going to get what you want. I mean, if you twist evidence hard enough, you can make it fit your narrative, right? I mean, that's what that's kind of what I'm getting at. You know, like if you're a believer, you hear a noise, like oh, it was a ghost. If you're a skeptic, you're like, oh, the house is creaking. But I mean, like, why do houses just creak, you know? Because they're old and there's a lot of weight on these But what if it was a new house? (laughs) It's still a lot of weight. A lot of stuff settling down. Hey, 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 we have have an intruder. Oh, hey, Lacey. Can you meow? Someone broke onto the set. (laughs) What do you pay security for? I I don't know, man. Like, well, funny enough, she is, she is head of security. (laughs) She's head of security? She's head of security. So you're angry that your head of security came on set? Of uh, of all the rooms that were built within the Winchester house, the seance room was one of the most near and dear to Sarah's heart. Because Sarah was very secretive regarding the happenings within this room, most of what is known as pure pure speculation. So and bullshit. Mo- <laughs> yeah, basically, it's all lies, right? For the most part, many people believe she used the room to attempt to contact tortured souls who followed her. I would assume that she would use the room and try to contact the loved ones. And honestly, but, I, was kind I mean, of that too, if this is all sense. pure speculation, are we even sure it's a seance room? So, I honestly, so it, I did a, I looked at a lot of different articles and YouTube videos stuff, which that's a tough thing. Like with stuff like this, you know, like if you're doing a report on, I don't know, like. Nessie. Inflation or employment or history, like you shouldn't be going and reading random articles and watching YouTube videos for your research because it's bull, you know, just bull. But when you're talking about ghosts and demons and stuff, no one's writing, you know, I'm sure there are some, but you're not reading peer reviewed articles about ghosts in the Winchester house. So you're, you know, for, we're all trying to make this fun. No one wants to sit here and listen to us rattle off, you know, a dictionary. It's not fun. But, um, you know, you just go by accounts. Like, what are most people saying? You know, we're storytellers here. We're not, you know, we're just kind of telling you this is what people say. Give you the facts, quote unquote facts, and you decide what you believe. That's it. That's the way I look at it. I believe cats are better than dogs. Mm, okay, well, I'm going to go find some peer-reviewed articles that say otherwise. <laughs> look at this little sweetheart. So yeah, maybe the seance room. You know, she just she's very. This room was very. Oh, she's camp- her own. She didn't allow people in this room, so. People are going to fill in the blanks. Maybe Dude, there maybe were seances. Just, uh, maybe, there maybe she just went in there to like, I don't know, get away from everyone. She's like, oh, God dang, everyone's so annoying. I mean, I don't blame her. So she never thinks you're a freaking weirdo. You know, why would you want to talk with them? I mean, that must the woman be nice, lost her right? family. People leaving you alone. And a freaking medium told her to move away. All right. Would you do that? <clears throat> would you would move I do away? What? Would I move away? Yeah. Well, if I had millions of... Well, I mean, I think if you went to a psychic and the psychic told you, like, you're clearly looking for answers, maybe you would do that. I've been to a psychic once, and I didn't believe a damn word they said. No, it was actually in Lake George. Wait, oh my God. Lake George is It's a popular one, though. They're such a tourist town, dude. They've been Uh, there as long as I can remember. Because I remember going there in the off-season. It's like no one lives there. Oh, yeah. If you go in the off-season, it is dead. I mean, it is like. It's just tourist, dude. Anyways, what did the psychic tell you? Uh, it was We're gonna, you're going to be a YouTube star? No, not at all. Just generic stuff. Like, you'll get married and you'll do this. You'll do that. Yeah, she got it right. But, I mean. Oh, my God. She was right. <laughs> that's so generic, though. But she got it right, though. How, you got, how can you say she's wrong? You're going to be alive tomorrow. Either way, well, I win. What if you jinxed it? <laughs> Knocking on wood, you asshole. (laughs) All right. In 1906, San Jose was hit with a devastating 7.9 magnitude earthquake. When this occurred, Sarah actually became trapped in her bedroom for hours while people removed rubble to get to her. Unfortunately, even though Sarah was alive and well, the same could not be said about the Winchester Mystery House. 
as a direct result of the disaster, the home was heavily damaged and required the floor count to be knocked down from seven stories to only four stories. Oh. By no means, however, did the house become smaller. Instead, Sarah chose to build out the property, so she went wider as opposed to longer. Believing that ghosts had actually been directly responsible for the home's destruction, Sarah doubled down and decided to make the house even more elaborate. So an earthquake happens, destroys... I mean, this was a pretty devastating earthquake. It damaged a lot of the area. But for some reason, she's like, yes, the, the ghosts destroyed half of San Jose just to get to me. It's awfully selfish and self-centered. I mean, that's pretty it. narcissistic. I agree. I mean, Something also, ghosts think. can do San that. Jose that's pretty damn powerful. Earthquake of 1922? Like, no, no, no. Yeah. No, is it's, it's, no, it's 1906. Where'd you get 1922? <laughs> Sorry, I read ahead in this questionable square. Spoilers, dude. Wait, it says San Francisco earthquake, not San Jose. Oh my god, they're close enough. They all got it. This is in San Jose. They all look the same. <laughs> Anyways, go ahead. Yeah, 7.9. How many people died? 700 to 3,000. The ghost did that. Yeah, that is true. And now those ghosts haunt her because it's her fault. Mm -hmm. You know, when the earthquake hit New York a couple weeks ago, I knew it was because I was there. The ghosts are following you. Believing that ghosts had actually been directly responsible for the home's destruction, Sarah doubled down and decided to make the house even more elaborate. To do this, she integrated more hallways, doors, and tricks throughout the house. In some cases, small doors would open to gigantic ballrooms, and some gigantic doors would reveal tiny closets. Ultimately, Sarah would continue to have the house built until her very last day on Earth. On September 5th, 1922, you spoiled it earlier, uh, Sarah Winchester... Sarah Winchester passed away in her sleep from heart failure at the ripe old age of 82. Almost immediately, all construction was halted on the property. The money dried up and no one wanted to do it anymore. No one wants to work anymore, you know? No one wants to work anymore, dude. Like, <laughs> I'm trying to pay $8 for someone to renovate my house, dude. And you know what? No one wants to do it. Exactly. I don't get it. No hazard pay, no insurance. Wh what gives? You're being selfish. How dare you? All of her wealth, stocks... And a trust fund would be given to her niece, Daisy Marriott. Oddly enough, however, the mansion would not be a part of this inheritance. Instead, the gigantic home would eventually be sold to a private buyer a couple months later. From then on, the home would become a designated landmark as well as a tourist attraction. I will admit, that is weird. So oh, weird. Daisy was her favorite niece, clearly. <laughs> and she did have others. Daisy specifically was her favorite. Uh, Daisy actually lived on the property with her for a little while. Um, it is odd because, like I said, she lived with her, and yes, she was her favorite. And don't be wrong, the money and stock, I mean, this Daisy was set for life. It's not like she got shafted, but uh, why not leave the home with her? I mean, that's and then let her sell it if she doesn't want to be there, you know what I mean? Like, it's just kind of odd. It's a we I will admit, that's honestly the weirdest thing about this entire story to me is that she just let it be sold to a private buyer didn't give her maybe the maybe she like maybe the thinking there was that uh what do you call it that like she, so right if the thinking supposedly is sarah is being haunted by spirits in this house why would you want to give a it's like when you gave me a hmm. bottle of demon sand why would i want demon sand like okay first of all i gave you like, sam what did i give for what was i trying to give fernando See, you don't even know. You have to go Sam, to your wife. What was I trying to give Fernando? What was the sand I was trying to give him? What was the sand I was trying to give Fernando? Maybe if you ask again, right. it was but black louder. Sand to keep spirits away from your house. Okay. I was trying to help you. <laughs> no, you're trying to you're inviting trying, demons in your no, house. No, you were inviting them over. Because <laughs> you I know guess. how clumsy I am. <laughs> I ran up to prove the point. <laughs> so... <clears throat> I'm just saying, she probably doesn't want to give Daisy all these demons. Wait a minute. Is Daisy Marriott, like, related to the Marriott family that created the Marriott Hotels? I don't know. You're our fact checker, so look at up. Daisy Marriott. Is it spelled the same way? I mean, you spelled it the same way in your paper. Maybe you're just Well, well that's how it's spelled. I don't know how. I don't. I've never stayed in a Marriott. Didn't you used to work Wait, for one? I did, dude. I mean, rich begets rich. I mean... So it wouldn't surprise me. No relation to the hotel people. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
just checking on them. It wouldn't have surprised me, to be honest. It, it wouldn't. It, like, it'd be like, did, did the whole, I was going to be like, did the whole Marriott fortune come from the Winchesters? Like, like it's funded by that? guns. Basically, dude. <laughs> Follow the money. That's why they put Bibles in the hotel now. They're so, they feel so guilty. Before Sarah passed away, both Sarah and many of the contractors who helped create the Winchester house had made wild claims that they were they had witnessed all kinds of supernatural phenomena. At first, it all seemed to stem from the mystery that surrounded both the property and its aloof owner. But as people would soon learn, there may have actually been something to all of the supposed spooky encounters. Ooh. Ooh. Cue the ghost music. Ooh. <laughs> Since it became open to the public, hundreds of visitors and staff have claimed to have witnessed ghosts. According to the official website of the Winchester Mystery House, here are some of the ones that have allegedly been witnessed. Ghosts like that of Clyde are the wheelbarrow ghost, as he's better known as, Native American warriors, a priest, cowboys, an old woman, an English gentleman, and even Sarah herself. People yeah. feeling tug people have reported feeling tugs and pulls on their clothes by unseen forces and entities, cold spots. Items moving around and the presence of a disembodied footsteps throughout the home. Did so you like every, rip this from Ghost Adventures? Because it sounds I was, like I was very, just about to say every generic thing that every could ever generic happen thing you've ever heard on an episode has been of reported. Ghost Adventures. And that's okay. Here's the other thing too about why I have issues believing this is haunted, because what you are looking at right now, no joke, that is how it is written. This is pulled almost ver- verbatim from their website. So even they didn't put in the effort to talk about like any real specifics. Like, oh, people shadow figures. Yeah, shadow figures. Oh, Claim okay, to cool. see them in the hallways and in the windows when viewing the home from the outside. Ooh, wow. Areas of the house that typically experience the most paranormal activity are the witch's cap, Sarah's bedroom, and the seance room. Witch's cap being like the little triangle domes or what? It, yeah, it's up top. Yeah. Um, it's like almost it's an attic, basically. But that was also Just another room an that... Illuminati symbol, my bad. <laughs> didn't mean that. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> There's a, yeah, apparently a lot of stuff happens in the witch's cap. And the witch's cap was another, weirdly enough, of another room that was supposedly very special to Sarah. Um, not as is special that speculative to again? Yeah, I mean, let's face it, this is all speculative. I mean, I thought, yeah. I thought everything you did was in fact. Oh, 100% fact. Everything. We don't say anything but facts on this podcast. That's what I'm saying, dude. Well, to some people, Sarah Winchester is simply remembered as the eccentric widow of a very rich man who, for one reason or another, believed in ghosts maybe a bit too much. To others, however, she was a brilliant woman who brought an extremely unconventional method of architecture and design to fruition. No matter how you view her, one thing we can probably all agree on is that she definitely was not afraid to do things her own way. As mentioned before... The Winchester Mystery House is still, by all intents and purposes, just that, a mystery. This is not only due to the fact that the creation of the house is steeped in controversy, but also because dozens of people every year purport the appearances of phantasms all over the property. Even Sarah herself doesn't seem to have vacated the mansion she once called home, which I guess begs the following question. If Sarah was actually being chased by legions of ghosts throughout most of her life, how do you think the conversation went down when she became one herself? Kind of an awkward conversation. Is phantasms or phantoms? Phantasms. Phantasms. The phantasm. Kind of an old heard of, way to say phantom. A figment of the imagination. Oh. Yeah. Apparitions. Windigos. You learn something new every day. Skinwalkers. Should we cut the video or should we wrap up the video? We're at 40 ish minutes. Oh, we're at the end anyway, so... Okay, well, so just keep going. This is going to be a shorter one, and that's okay. okay. They don't all have to be super long. That's fine, yeah. But yeah, well, Just so you know, the Pied Piper, I'm going to talk for like hours. That's fine. That's fine. That's okay. But yeah, so that is the story of Sarah Winchester and her mystery house. That's, you know, it's pretty short and sweet, but to be honest, it's there's not a lot of... Uh, I guess when you talk about a lot of places, like for example, we call, when we talk about the Whaley House later... There's all kinds Ooh, of why like, does that sound familiar? The Whaley, Whaley House has got a lot of I, I can't wait to do that one. That one's very creepy. Wait, didn't the the boys go to this one? They did, yeah. They did. Hmm. So, you know, there's not a lot of real, you know, like you mentioned Clyde and you mentioned, you know, the priests. And, you know, tourists have said, Oh, I've seen Clyde, I've seen a man working and this and that. And 
you know, I mean, Clyde was one of the people that Sarah Winchester supposedly spotted too. So I guess there's some history steeped in that. They believe he's a man who worked on the property when it was a farm. And, you know, it just, uh, he decided, you know what, I like it here. I'm going to keep pushing my wheelbarrow. So good for Clyde. But, you know, like a cowboy or, you know, the Native American warriors and the cowboys were supposedly people who died from a Winchester weapon. But it's like, why are we still seeing them if Sarah Winchester is gone and no Winchesters own the property anymore? Like, wouldn't you think mm-hmm. that, I mean, there's definitely heirs to the Winchester, you know, finances. So you think they'd be following, well, Daisy's, I'd imagine, has passed away since. But why aren't they stalking Daisy's children or, you know. That's fair to say, dude. Fair to say. Or maybe if you're rich enough, you can actually get rid of the ghosts. <laughs> you hire just an armada of exorcist you just need you just need the money dude money are you too gold. poor to get rid of ghosts <laughs> <laughs> sounds uh, like poor people problems make all the ghosts go away with my millions exactly mr monopoly money over here dude. <laughs> you need a monocle you need a monocle a top hat and a thick mustache all right and irs issues <laughs> all right everybody sorry so, if it wasn't our best work but you know what? Hey, we've had a long week. This was kind of a short one on purpose. I went and visited Fernando over at his home over the weekend. Unfortunately. And we spent a long time trying to record another video, which we can oh, talk you'll about see. another time. You'll see how that went. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to go check out um, the misery that that video was. Someone in that coming. video definitely made their own facts on how to play the game. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be coming out sometime this week, probably. So, yeah, let me give you some plugs to uh, hopefully go check out. Um, If you want to check us out on our audio-only streaming, you can find us on Spotify and Apple Music and Amazon Music and whatever else you got. Just look for You Go First Podcast. Should be on there. If you want to come see us, you know, actually watch us on YouTube, just look for... Find us in Plattsburgh, New York, baby. (laughs) No. Uh, you can look for us on YouTube at You Go First Pod. Uh, if you want to watch us play some video games that are nice and spooky, you can find us also on YouTube at You Go First Gaming. And if you have a question about anything or you have any suggestions about something you'd like to hear, you can email us at yougofirst.tv at gmail.com. So, yeah, uh, we'd very appreciate it also if you, you know, like this video if you're watching on YouTube. Give us a five-star rating if you're on Spotify or whatever. And leave a comment, subscribe, follow. Anything will help immensely. So, so yeah, just uh, or don't. <laughs> or don't. Or don't. Or tell us to. We can't to make you. Leave us some hate mail, you know. Leave us some hate comments about the stuff. Yeah, you could do that too. It's a free country. It is a free country to an extent. Uh <laughs> So yeah, that's that I'm gonna wrap it up. That's all I got. You got anything? Final uh, thoughts. Final thoughts. Just uh thanks for listening. If you listen this far, and yeah, please subscribe to our other channel as well. As well as this one. And please watch my videos because Austin only makes it so his videos get watched and mine don't. It's weird. It's the industry secret. We can't let him know. Yeah, I think it's just uh I think it's insider sabotage, but Austin's mom. <laughs> He's bullying me again. <laughs> All right, guys. We'll, we'll let you go. Yeah, thanks for hanging out. All right. Remember to stay spooky, everyone. Have a great night. Good night. Ooh. Ooh. Time to heat up some food. Lacey, I need to heat up food. Lacey.